Hi, welcome back to EducateTube.com. My name is Sipsky, your host. Today I'll be talking about why I kept my Blackmagic Pocket Camera. There are four reasons. Now before I get started, let's switch over to this camera. Okay, so now I just switched the camera. Now it's the uh, Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera filming me with uh, Olympus 12mm f2.0, <clears throat> whereas previously it was a Sony a7S2 2870mm f2.8. Okay, so hopefully you can see the difference. I did a bit of a grading, uh, color grading, and um, a little bit of sharpening. So, and it's set at 24 frames per second. Um, the ISO is around 400, and I believe it's at f4 for both. All right, and let's talk about um, this pocket cinema camera, why I'm keeping it. Initially, I was gonna actually going to sell it off because you know I need a little bit of money to uh, fund my other gears like the Sony and all that. But I, when I actually got a hand out on this and I was like, you know, playing around with it, I was, uh, you know, filming it and I realized, wow, the quality on this thing, even though it's 1080p, is amazing. So let's go through the top four reason why I actually kept the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, even though I already have the Sony A7S II as well as the Sony A6500. So let's go through the first point. It's not in any order. The first point is this. Uh, Pocket Cinema, just like the uh, Sony A7S II and the A6500, is portable. Um, so it's small, compact, and portable. Now, a lot of people say, well, when you start adding a lot of stuff to there, like, for example, a, a mic or other, um, like, meta bones and a special adapter for the lens, then it gets heavier, and maybe add another external uh, battery, and it gets even bigger, right? So, that could be a good argument. However, you know, you think about it, I have this Olympus 12mm f2.0 on this uh, Blackmagic Pocket Cinema it's perfect it's not that big it's actually quite small I mean it doesn't fit in my pocket however it does fit in my knapsack a small knapsack so it definitely is a portable camera uh, compared to Sony A7S II and A6500 they're both they all compact so that's number one reason okay and num number two reason is of course is the image quality even though it's a, a 1080p uh, 20, I'm filming at 24 frames per second. The quality is amazing. Now, I think that contribute to its uh, Kodak um, uh, software and it's the um, ProRes HQ and ability to record also in RAW as well. And because of that, it's amazing. The The quality of the, the film, when you get out of that, the recording, it's just fabulous. I mean, even if I record in low lights, the uh, the noise actually look grainy and looks kind of film like, you know. So um, now compare that to Sony when it does uh, you know film in low light, but when I increase the ISO up, the uh, the noise actually looks funny. It look kind of uh, like a like actually like dust, and it's actually not a very good way uh, to show on the camera. Whereas the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera that uh, grain or noise actually look like grainy film like quality so it's actually quite good now of course uh, if I want to shoot uh, night scene and all that I'm probably going to use uh, Sony a7s2 and day scene I'm most likely going to use the black magic pockets uh, cinema camera or the uh, Sony a6500 but because I saw the quality on the black magic pocket cinema camera I, I think I'm going to um, mainly use for the day uh, shoot what else so quality the image quality is amazing because it uses a Kodak, ProRes, QH, and RAW. Of course, that's a very big file, but you know you can work around that as long as you, uh, you know, have a big um, uh, uh, SD card. Okay, number three is because of its uh, Kodak, the ProRes, um, and I use uh, DaVinci for uh, editing my uh, film, especially for color grading. And because they're the same company that makes, you know, Blackmagic Pocket Cinema is the same company that makes that software, DaVinci Resolve, well, as you can see, it's very native to each other, it's very fully compatible. So when I direct, uh, drag the uh, file into DaVinci Resolve software, it works perfectly, okay? Um, in fact, um, it took me only a few minutes to grade the, col uh, the color, and 
do a bit of sharpening and I have a, a beautiful shot. As you can see right now, this is actually great with the uh, Da Vinci Resolve and I did a bit of sharpening and a little bit of uh, color grading and you can see it's quite good. Uh, what else? So that's number three. So e easily to, to import into Da Vinci Resolve and the color grading uh, when you do it is quite easy. Compared to Sony, for example, I have a hard time matching uh, the color grading, like I can't get it perfect. Whereas the uh, Blackmagic uh, Pocket Cinema Camera grading is quite easy. So that's number three. Color grading is easy with Pocket Cinema Camera. Of course, I'm not a colorist, so uh, maybe that's why. Okay, um, I'm getting used to how to uh, color grade uh, different films and looks. So you know, hopefully, uh, once I do that, I may. Uh, get better experience with Sony cameras. But for now, with the uh, Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, um, you know, it's very intu intuitive when I'm doing color grading. So that's number three. Number four, which is actually most of you may not think it is a big deal, but for me it is because I own a DJI S1000 drone and it's fully compatible with that because I have a gimbal that um, uh, allow the Pocket Cinema Camera to be uh, retrofit into that drone. And in fact, the lens, the uh, Olympus 12mm uh, f2 fits perfectly with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera onto this S1000 drone. So can you imagine this when I'm actually uh, filming ground level, so I'll use this camera and then I decided you know, to do an aerial view. I just hook up this camera to my drone and there we go. It's a, a continuous shot and the color grading will be amazing because it's the same camera ground level and aerial view. So number fourth reason is because I own DJI S1000. I'm able to put this camera onto that drone and have this continuous uh, uh, film uh, quality that's both in, in, uh, on ground and as well as aerial view. So it's a continuous um, uh, uh, view perspective, right? So this is why I kept my um, Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. I mean, you may the fourth reason may not be yours, but definitely, in my opinion, uh, because of uh, DJI S1000, I think that's a very valid. In fact, this is probably the main reason why I kept the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera because I'm able to hook it to my DJI S1000 drones. Okay, so next time, actually, I'm going to talk about um, stabilizing the image on. Blackmagic Pocket Cinema's camera. The one thing I don't like about this uh, camera is that you know it's uh, it doesn't have a internal stabilization, and so you know with my you know Sony A7S2 and the A6500, it does have that five-axis in-body stabilization, whereas this Blackmagic Pocket Cinema's camera doesn't have it. But next week I'm going to show you uh, how to stabilize the image using never seen before. A, a gimbal that I put together and it's gonna be amazing. Uh, you'll probably, uh, if you saw your Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, you probably want it back now because now I'm able to connect this to my gimbal modified machine. It's gonna look amazing. Okay, so next week come back and we're gonna look at that new technology that I put together. Thanks for watching EducateTube.com.